so I thought I'd do a really quick update. Um, it has just gone 5 p.m. on the 9th of November. Um, it's Saturday, and I don't know if this is the start of something or not, but um, I am getting quite a lot of cramps. Um, on Thursday, so two days ago, um, I had a internal check and uh, a stretch and sweep. And I was um, three centimeters dilated and pretty much 100% effaced and ready to go. Uh, and today we went out to a birthday and then at three o'clock, so two hours ago, um, I went toilet and when I wiped, I noticed that there was quite a lot of like my plug which has been coming out in little chunks for the past couple of weeks anyway. But this was quite a lot and TMI warning. Um, I was basically like pulling it out of me because it wouldn't break. Um, and it was probably about the size of a golf ball, if not bigger. And pretty much every time I have gone toilet since and I've wiped, there's been more chunks of it. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I know not to completely bank on that. But I have also been having lots of um, cramps, which that has also been happening quite a bit lately. But they are feeling quite contraction-y down in my lower sort of abdomen area, sort of like period cramps. And my back is a little bit sore too when it sort of happens. So I don't know if this is the start of it, so I thought I would quickly do an update just in case. So, wish me luck. So I thought I'd do a very quick update. It is 7.44 the following morning and nothing. Nothing has happened, so it's just sort of like false alarm. Um, I... So I was up um, until probably about 11.30, just having cramps, and I was just kind of tidying up the house and whatnot just in case. Um, and then I just went to bed to try and sleep it off, and I slept it off, so no big deal. Um, I do know that, you know, from previous experiences that, you know, it doesn't necessarily happen when you lose your plug straight away, so that's fine. I just thought I would be vigilant and do that post yesterday, just in case... It was the start of something so then I would have at least got a little bit of um, recording done from the start but no slam, no slam, I'm still in one piece and now I'm just a little bit tired but apart from that we good. So it is now 9 p.m. on the 11th of November um, which obviously means that no, I didn't go into labour. And, yeah, I pretty much, I think by that next day, um, was it the next day? Yeah, when I did my last update, I pretty much knew that it wasn't, it wasn't time. Um, my battery's going to die soon, so I better be quick. Um, anyway, yeah, I knew, pretty much knew that it wasn't time for it to happen. But then not long after I did that last little update video, um, I started cramping hard out again. So I was kind of, you know, still feeling like, you know, it might happen. But then again, it died off. Um, so, yeah, and today... I have been feeling fine, pretty much. I definitely, definitely, definitely have dropped more. Um, I pretty much have the full-on pregnancy waddle going on. I got a call from my midwife at about lunchtime today. And she said that she got some of my results back from um, my... <laughs> the tear in my face. 
um, I got some of she got some of the results back from my blood test that I did on Friday and yeah so today's Monday so she got some of the results back and my B12 levels were very low she said normally they pick up low levels um, of B12 in like the second trimester and then they can put you on like supplements to help try and boost your um, B12 levels but she said since we are obviously way too close to birth to start taking these B12 supplements um, I would have to get an injection so I popped down to her clinic and saw her and she gave me the B12 injection in my hip which um, sucked but hey I'm about to go through labor what's an injection um, yeah so I got that done and felt better about that told her everything because I hadn't actually updated her on anything that has kind of been going on um, because I'm like I will obviously let her know if I was in labor but I wasn't and you know I never felt like I was it was always like it could happen soon sort of thing but I told her and even she said um, you have dropped heaps since I had last seen her which was last Thursday um, so she she yeah she basically said that even if I were to go into labor before this Thursday coming um, when I'm in the safe zone to birth here uh, she pretty much said that there is no way if I went into labor that they would transfer me over to the city an hour away um, which is where you do have to give birth if you are under 37 weeks but she said just by looking at me um, and seeing how much I've just dropped and because of all this stuff that has been going on uh, she's said definitely I would have dilated some more and on Thursday I was three centimeters dilated and a hundred percent effaced so pretty much ready to go just waiting for the last little signal for this baby to you know kickstart the actual labor um, but she said you know there's no way that we would transfer you because you would already come in uh, too far along to transfer so I feel good about that but in saying that I am 36 weeks and four days today which means that I literally only have a couple of days until I am 37 weeks and in that safe zone so we'll just see what happens over these next couple of days and I see her again on Thursday but I thought I would also add into this update um so my hair is a mess and the lighting is terrible but whatever uh so my father-in-law has been going back and forth pretty much since we moved into this place back in March um, been going back and forth between wanting to move back to England or to stay here and he has been yeah pretty much saying that he wants to move back and then Michael will have like a really big discussion with him and be like you know you can't you can't just kind of drop everything and we are you know we signed a contract for this house for a year so we can't move out until March 2020 anyway um and basically the last time he decided that he was like oh no I'm thinking of going back uh Michael sat down with him and pretty much said you know at least stick out a year at least have one more Christmas here and then you can say that you at least stuck it out for a year. And then after that, if you still feel like you want to go, then, you know, we're not going to try and stop you. Not that I was trying to stop him, but, you know, Michael and um, his brother were kind of like, you know, you came all this way and spent all this money, uh, 
getting your furniture over here, leaving that life behind, and now you sort of want to go back and leave pretty much your entire family, um, all your grandkids and everything that you have been around for, you know, since the, since Christmas last year, and now you just want to give that all up to go back to the life that you had that you claim to be miserable living. But, you know, obviously he is a grown man and he can make his own mind up. And if he wants to go, then he can go. Uh, but, yeah, so basically he has said that if he did go, he would stick out Christmas and he might go before March, which is when our um, contract for this house is up, but that he would leave enough money in his New Zealand bank account to... Um, pay his part of you know the rent um until the contract is up but he would just you know be gone before that which is great which is awesome um yeah so basically he told us a couple of weeks ago i don't even think it was that long ago sorry I don't even think it was that long ago I think it might have been like maybe 10 days ago he sort of mentioned in passing that he was thinking of going back and so Michael sat down with him and was like look you tell me if you want to go back and you know then we will know for sure whether we are going to push our current landlord um well not push but you know pretty much ask for an extension of our contract which was always the plan that when you know the year was up or the year was close to being up we were going to either you know we we're going to sit down and make the decision to either renew the contract for another year or you know terminate the contract and find another rental property and it can go on both both parts like it would could either be us terminating it or her terminating it because she might want the house back as um, a Airbnb or as just like a holiday home for herself which she was using it as both like she was um, short term renting it out to people but she was also coming down pretty much once a month and like inviting her family and stuff like that so she hasn't been able to do that since we've been living here and we have spoken to her a couple of times asking if she knew whether she wanted to extend the contract but she sort of has never given us an answer so when my father-in-law said that he was pretty sure that he did want to go back he still hadn't set it in stone or anything he just said that he was pretty sure he wanted to go back so we took that upon ourselves to make the decision instead of it literally being his decision which it has felt like every single time he has said that he's thinking of going back we have literally been sitting around you know feeling like we're living in like limbo because we just don't know what is going on like we you know we uprooted our life and everything like that we moved out of the place we were living in which we loved and we would still be living in if he hadn't moved over but we were like, you know, we will do it to get him here and for all of us to live in this bigger house together so that he wasn't alone. And, you know, every time he has said that he is thinking of going back, it's like, well, then what are we going to do? Like, we're going to have to find another rental property. It's going to take, you know, so long, but we can't, you know, we have, it's all on him, like, he would be the deciding factor, you know, um, because if he wants to stay, then cool, we'll stay in this house, but if he wants to go, then that means that we have to move, like, we can't stay in this house if he decides to leave, because, frankly, we can't afford it, it's too much, we, we have one income, I don't work, because I am a stay-at-home mum, and we can't afford a $600 a week rent, you know, to live in this house. And why would we want to anyway? Because 
if we lived here, like, we can't put the kids in the bedrooms downstairs because there's, the kids are too young. Like, if they were teenagers, it would be a different story. Um, but we don't want to sublet it to anyone else. We don't want anyone coming in and, you know, flatting downstairs or anything like that. Like, it's hard enough having him, like, I don't even know if you can hear, but you can hear all his, t like, he's watching a movie at the moment. You can hear it going on down there, you know, and that's like, you put up with it because it's sort of your family. Like, there's no way I'd want someone that wasn't family living down there. Um, so, yeah, basically, once he had told us for the, the last time that um, he was thinking of going back, we were sort of like, okay, let's take charge of this situation. And so we were the ones that actually made the decision that no, we weren't going to push for um, an extension on, you know, the contract for this house. We were just going to say, all right, that's it. Come March, we're moving out. We're, whether he moves back to England or, you know, if he makes that decision to not move back, then that's awesome. But he will have to find his own place to live. Like, we're done. We're done. Come March, we are moving into our own place. And that was the decision that we made. And so, you know, like, I'm so close to having this bloody baby. And then he throws this on us. And now I'm like, okay, it's so hard getting a rental in this town. And now I'm going to have to try and figure out how the hell I'm going to get us in a rental when I've got, like, a newborn. And, you know, two kids. People are like, yeah, you've got two kids kind of thing. But then, like, obviously we've never tried getting a house with three kids before. And I feel like... A lot of people will be like, okay, now you're getting to, like, more kids to adults ratio. So they might not be as willing to sort of let us rent out a place. Um, but we very briefly mentioned that we were going to be moving to our neighbours. And Michael does a lot of work for the, um, the husband and... He, well, both of them, they are the loveliest couple ever. And they also have a, another home that they use as an Airbnb. And it is actually not the house next door to us, but the house next to that. So they can see their Airbnb place from the house that they live in. And we kind of just mentioned it like that we were going to be moving in March um, and so that we were going to have to start looking at a looking for a rental property probably not until like January but you know we were going to have to start at some stage and we were just kind of giving them the heads up that we won't be living here anymore because they have said that they enjoy having us as neighbours and stuff like that um, and then yeah so we mentioned that to them and then we came home and I think it was probably a couple of hours later, they, like, came back around. They came to our house and sort of said, oh, we've, you know, briefly discussed it. And if you guys want, we will be happy to rent out our place, the other home that is currently an Airbnb. Um, we will rent it out to you guys long term. So that was kind of like, wow, we have never ever got a house that easy before and it seemed like way too good to be true they took us through the house um said we could basically keep whatever furniture we wanted and everything else they would just get rid of um they want really long-term tenants they don't want just a year or anything like that they want long-term long-term which we do as well um we had kind of worked out that we would be able to afford um about 470 a week rent as like our max kind of budget like we definitely would not want to do any more than that but they came back to us saying that you know if we were happy then they would um charge 400 instead of um because we had told them that our the top of our budget would be 470 a week and they said they came back with 400 um, basically saying that 
you know, because we want to buy a house eventually and we have savings for that. And they said, you're never going to get ahead and get to buy your own place if you're paying that much in rent, especially being on just like one can, one income family. So, we, you know, they are doing us so many favours. They said, we won't need a bond or anything like that. And Michael said, you know, like, no, no, we will definitely pay a bond because we have kids. If anything were to happen, you know, like, I would hate for something to happen, like, you know, between the relationships that we have with them. And they were just like, if the kids break something, fix it. You know, don't worry about a bond or anything like that. So, yeah, and it all just seemed way too good to be true. And then they called Michael this morning and asked if we could pop around there this evening, which we did. And basically she had printed out this rental tenancy agreement and asked us if we were happy to kind of sit down with them go over a couple of things and then sign this tenancy agreement so that it's a peace of mind for both us and for them that we're definitely gonna take the house come March and yeah so we did that we ha we now have a new place to live come March and I am over the moon about it I oh you have no idea how stressful it is for me. Well, you probably have an idea. You might have an idea. But it is so stressful for me when it comes to finding places to live. We have had to move so many times. Um, and I feel like it's never because we just want to move. Like, it, it, well, no, it's never because we just want to move. Because we we don't want to move from places. But we have moved so many times. And... I am just done. I am over moving. And I don't want to do it again come March. But I am super excited. Because this new house. Is, is a really. It's a lovely house. And I just. I just feel like everything is falling into place. And the fact that it happens to be this week. When. You know this baby. Is literally about to come. Like this is like. I don't know like it's like new beginnings and it's all happening like this week and I just feel so good and everyone that you know I've spoken to like you know because we've we knew about this like kind of from the middle of last week which was when we were sort of talking about it all but obviously now that we've signed this basically a new contract for this other house it's just so, it's so much more set in stone. But when we were talking to them about it um, before we signed all this, they were like, no, no, we, we are serious. Like, because we keep saying, like, are you serious? Are you sure? Like, we don't want to, like, push for you guys to do this thing if you're not 100% sure about it. And, yeah, it's just been, like, I've had three people in the last couple of days. Oh, Sorry. Two of them being today have just said to me like you are so calm and you are so relaxed for someone who is literally about to have a baby and you know I've like my dad messaged me and he was like are you nervous are you excited all of the stuff and I was just like I'm just chilling I'm just ready I'm ready now I'm I feel like you know, the stars are all aligned and things are pretty perfect right now, quite frankly. Like, things are pretty perfect and I'm feeling good and I'm feeling ready. I'm feeling ready for, like, the first time ever in any of my pregnancies. With Max, I was over it, so I was ready, like, because I was over it. With Ava... I just, I just wanted her out because I was so scared of having another birth like Max's. But this time, like, I'm just, I'm just ready. I'm not over it. I'm not like, get this baby out of me, hurry up, try and do everything. Like, running up and down the stairs or any of the old wives' tales to try and get this baby out. I'm just like, you know, it's going to happen and I'm ready for it to happen. 
I'm, I'm just, I'm in a really good place right now. And I'm ready for this new chapter. And I'm feeling really good about that.